name is Josh Matikor, if you don't already know, and I do a lot of videos on IT and cybersecurity. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my new cybersecurity course that I released, as well as this CompTIA Security Plus Practice Question Deck we kind of built. Uh, we're going to release this as well to kind of help people prepare for the cybersecurity course. So in this video, um, I'll give like a whole overview of my course, like how much it costs, like what's in it. It's designed to give a lot of hands-on experience, like not only through labs and your personal portfolio, but you have the opportunity to kind of contribute to the community after you join the course. And then you have the opportunity to get a reference from me as well as some actual experience to go on your resume that might look something like this. Basically, I came up with this idea. I'm gonna launch it immediately when the course launches on April 1st, and I'll definitely remove it if people abuse it. But basically, like in, our, in the IT course Discord, there's a lot of people in there who ask a lot of questions, and I, I end up having to answer a lot of questions and do like tech support, essentially, and helping people implement things. Um, we're also gonna have a, a Discord for the cybersecurity course, and no doubt there's gonna be a lot of people in there and a lot of people asking questions as well. So if you're one of those people who really likes helping out those people, you know, you have the opportunity to put some kind of uh, experience on your resume that looks like this, and then use me and my personal company as a reference. So if, you, if you're able to help 15 people and you kind of fill out this form and send it to me, like the date you helped them, what you assisted with, and the actual link to the chat in Discord, and you send this to me, I'll be able to file it away. And then, you know, I'll I let you use me and my company as a reference and then put something on your resume. And then when your future employer calls me, um, I can just simply look up your template like this, and then I can see exactly what you did, and then I can give you a, a good reference, right? I think this is a really good idea, and I think it's really fair because these titles, cybersecurity support technician for, for 15 assists, cybersecurity support analyst for 30, and then if there's some special project I need to I need help with or something, and you we you work with me and contribute to contribute to the course or something, you know, you can be a cybersecurity support engineer, and then uh, I will vouch for you, right, when your future employer calls me. So this this is kind of the first area where you can get experience, and then the rest of the experience, you know, is going to be from the actual course in the lab section where we actually build a whole like honey net in sock uh, in the cloud in Azure. And honestly, I, I honestly believe this is the best cybersecurity course on the internet because it really specifically addresses the talent gap and the problem that we have in our industry of people not wanting to hire entry-level people and then the entry-level people not not having experience so they won't get hired and it's just it's like really horrible catch-22 situation so the reason i believe this course is the best one not only will you learn a lot of useful theory and be able to interview very well there's a lot of real actual hands-on components like dealing with actual live attackers on the internet building your whole environment, dealing with logging and monitoring, building out your own incidents, practicing incident response in accordance you know, with NIST 861. And then there's an actual component where you can put real actual experience on your resume for my company um, if that's something you're interested in doing. So um, I'm really confident people are gonna definitely see success with this course because it's pretty much what's been missing in our, in our industry. And I, I really worked hard to kind of solve that problem and, and bridge that talent gap. So I'm really confident about this course and I wish something like this existed when I was trying to get into cybersecurity. Just wanna throw that out there. But before we get started, I'm just gonna ask, please consider subscribing if you're not already. The Security Plus Practice Question Deck took forever to make and the cybersecurity course also took a long time to make as well. So definitely appreciate any likes and subscribe. So getting right into the video. I won't go into this like too deeply here, but basically the course was built around increasing your quote unquote stats for different areas. So th these are kind of the different areas that you need to care about when you're breaking into any industry, especially cybersecurity and IT and tech in general. It it's kind of uh, designed to help you pay attention to these areas and address these areas and kind of, kind of quote unquote raise your stats in these areas uh, as much as possible. And if you're wondering like how difficult this course is, I would say it's probably moderate difficulty. Um, it's definitely harder than the IT course, but it's not super conceptually difficult as if it's like a software engineering course or like algorithms course or something like that. It's not quite that hard. So I'd say it's like medium difficulty. If you're watching this and wondering like, oh, like, but will I be able to get a job? 
Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this as transparently as possible. Um, this course was developed in the same way as the IT course, and we've had a, a lot of success with the IT course. There's a lot of testimonials and like you know stuff you can watch on YouTube, like interviews with the students I did. But to answer your question, like will I be able to get a job? The moment I'd be like, yeah, you're like guaranteed a job. Like it just becomes a scam because you know I cannot control like the economic climate and everything. But I will say the reality of things is something like this. Assuming this is like the employability meter, like how employable are you zero percent being like no one will hire you hundred percent being like you know anyone will hire you so basically the reality is like before you go through the course maybe you're going to be somewhere like on this half of the meter i'm assuming uh, otherwise you wouldn't be taking the course and then you go through the course and then your employability goes up you know through the 12 stats through the experience generation through you know having a nice squared array resume with me as a reference etc cetera, etc cetera, interview practice you're going to end up somewhere over here you're going to be much much more employable than you were uh, from the start. So no doubt, I'm super confident if people go through this course and do what I recommend, you're you're definitely going to be able to find a job. The good thing about this course is you don't necessarily have to apply to like only like hard security jobs. Um, you could apply to, you know, even like any entry level IT jobs. You can apply to any kind of cloud support engineering job because the course so heavily leverages the cloud. Or of course, you can apply to security jobs as well, like any kind of cybersecurity entry-ish associate level job um, is fair game for you to apply to as well. And this is kind of, in my head, this is kind of like the, the stats, you know, I guess for the different kind of jobs that you'll be able to apply to, like how easy it is to get hired, how easy the job is, and then how much pay you might be able to expect. So, you know, as entry-level IT, obviously, if you go through this course, you'll be more than qualified to work in entry-level IT. Um, you can expect the job to be relatively relatively easy the hiring may be relatively easy compared to the other but entry level IT pay is like not going to be as good as cloud support engineering or you know cybersecurity pay if that makes sense and this is just kind of a visualization of the branches i guess the branch of security that's covered in this course basically like this is these are not you know it's not exhaustive but these are some different branches of security and this slide is kind of what you can expect to cover in this course so it's relative it's pretty heavy in security operations we do like a lot of security operations in the cloud like incident response and whatnot but we do some other little things like scattered around here like we touch on security frameworks uh, risk assessment the risk management framework we talk about iocs like indicators of compromise we talk about like legal compliance a little bit and then you know uh obviously cloud security and security architecture since all of that is um it's being delivered in azure essentially so just to kind of give you a high level overview of the branches or the domains i guess of security that we'll be working with so yeah definitely check it out Again, it's gonna be half off until May. You can sign up for the free intro course with the link in the description below, or you can pre-order the course or just buy it, right, if it's after May. But yeah, getting right into actually like what's in the course, like what you can expect to do in this course. The course is broken up into three different sections. There's a, a theory section, a, a labs section, and then a job hunt section. And we go really hard on all three of these sections, especially try to go especially hard on the job hunt section because that's the part that really matters, right? That's the whole reason of you know, taking a course to try to get a job afterwards. So kind of what you can expect to get out of the course. Um, I'll just go over these relatively quick. Um, in the theory section, there's like a a security refresher basically everything in this security refresher exists because the uh, the rest of the content on the course kind of builds off of it so security refresher you learn about you know cia triad security controls threats of vulnerabilities and exploits and we talk about um, risk a little bit and then in every one of these sections i do want to say there are practice interviews this course also includes its own anki deck and inside the anki deck there's 250 practice interview questions and all of the interview questions are based off of all of the stuff in the theory section and the lab section as well so it's kind of like you you learn something we do it in the labs and then there's um, interview questions generated on that topic for you to kind of review over time if that makes sense so there's a security refresher um, there's a section on frameworks where I include a lot of a lot of these popular frameworks from NIST and CIS, as well as a regulatory compliance section where we kind of learn about popular regulations and laws like surrounding HIPAA, PCI, DSS, which is like payment card industry, um, learn about CIS and then GDPR a little bit, like not super deep, but enough to impress interviewers, right? And the last thing in the theory section, uh, we go over security operation centers and then uh, incident response.
And that kind of wraps up the theory section. I tried to make this section as interesting as possible because, you know, reading about frameworks and regulatory compliance is not that fun. So I tried to provide a lot of context to it with my real life, as well as um, interview questions, like practice interview questions surrounding all of these topics. This section is really quite good and it's going to help a lot when it comes time to interview. And then next we have a lab section. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk about what we actually do in the lab and then I'll go over the bullet points of what's actually in the lab section, if that makes sense. Basically the lab portion, like the technical portion of the course, the whole thing is conducted in Azure. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, one, so everyone can have the same experience. Two, there's like a lot of security components and a lot of stuff in Azure that we can do to uh, practice and get experience and it's really, really useful. And then three, it's good to get some cloud exposure as well, like in conjunction with the cybersecurity exposure. It just helps a lot when it comes to starting to apply for jobs. So basically what we're going to do in Azure, we're gonna create um, a lot of these resources. So we're gonna create like a Azure Active Directory instance. We're gonna create a couple of virtual machines, like a SQL database. Um, we're going to have some firewalls, aka network security groups on our virtual machines. We're going to create a blob storage. You can kind of think about it like an enterprise Dropbox. Key Vault, we're, it's like a, essentially an enterprise password manager. And then we're going to use this activity log, which is basically just um, a component of Azure that keeps track of like monitoring and logging and whatnot. We're going to create this log analytics workspace, which is going to serve as our central log repository. We're going to ingest logs from all of our resources in Azure into this log analytics workspace. We're going to spin up a SIM, create that, which is Azure Sentinel. And then Azure Sentinel, our SIM is going to reach into our log analytics workspace, which is our log repository. And then from that, we're going to be able to create a bunch of alerts and incidents and attack maps and kind of see everything that's going on in our environment. And of course, because our environment is on the public internet, it's definitely going to be susceptible to a lot of live attack traffic from like actual adversaries out on the internet, whether or not that's bots or actual human hackers or, you know, something else. Um, those entities are going to be constantly attacking our resources. So we're going to use our SIM and like all of our logging and stuff to, to do monitoring and configure alerts and spin up incidents. And we'll be able to practice actual real incident response because our stuff is actually being attacked by real uh, attackers on the internet. So that's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to create some attack maps that look like this. We're going to plot the location of different malicious actors across the world who are attacking our resources. We're going to let this environment run for 24 hours and kind of record the statistics on it to see, you know, how many alerts were generated, how many logs came in during that time period where the, our environment's being attacked. And then we're going to kind of work to harden our environment through various means. Like we're going to use some NIST special publication, like 853, apply some security controls to our environment and really lock it down. And then we're going to take our lockdown environment and kind of observe it for another 24 hours. And, and then we're going to compare these metrics and use it for our portfolio in the end. So it's going to be really really, really interesting. So covering the actual technical components of the lab portion of what we're actually going to do in the course, there's just going to be an Azure crash course section um, in case maybe you're technical, but you haven't used Azure before. We'll kind of teach you about that a bit. We're going to set up logging and monitoring for all of our resources in Azure. We're going to set up a geo IP database. So we will be able to plot where the attackers are based on their IP address. So we can kind of get a visualization of where they're coming from. We're going to do quite a bit of um, log querying, and we're going to use KQL for that. Um, if you know what SQL is, SQL structured query language, KQL is Kusto query language. It's, I don't want to say it's the same thing, but if you learn KQL, like learning SQL is going to be really trivial. So you're going to get a lot of experience with that querying logs. Um, there's like a re really large section of logging and monitoring where we set up logging for like Windows and Linux virtual machines, like our firewall logs. We're going to set up logging for the SQL server, our storage account, and all this other stuff in order to bring all the logs into a central repository where, where we can kind of query them and query for you know malicious activity taking place. We're going to do a bit of vulnerability management uh, in the sense of hardening our environment after the fact. We're going to do some, like I talked about, some attack map creation, some alert creation based on KQL query rules. We're going to practice some actual incident response in accordance with NIST 861, the computer incident handling guide. Like I talked about, we're going to monitor our insecure HoneyNet for 24 hours. We're going to harden it with NIST 853 controls, and then we're going to monitor it for another 24 hours and kind of do a comparison between the two to see like what effect applying security controls on our environment actually does. 
And then the last section, the job hunt section, it includes a personal portfolio setup where we, I walk you through how to set up the actual portfolio of, you know, setting up that whole honey net, capturing the attack traffic and then hardening it afterwards. There's going to be a whole resume construction section where we teach you how to build a nice ATS compliant resume that conveys your skills and abilities and everything you kind of learned in the course. Um, again, there'll be actual experience on this, you know, if you opt to help people. Otherwise, you'll have some nice labs and projects you can put down as your experience. Social network development section where we kind of talk about like how to set up your LinkedIn properly, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, this kind of stuff. Uh, there's going to be a job hunt execution section. Job hunt execution and probability. We just, I just kind of break down how it's a numbers game. If you have every, if you have like, you know, best possible resume you can make good portfolio you know everything i kind of recommend to do in the course we kind of break down the probability of how many jobs you might need to apply to before you actually get hired and then we have like a little section where we talk about supplemental learning recommendations and free training and other free certification that's out there that will definitely help your portfolio and help you get a job faster than otherwise and also with this course there's basically you're really being supported really heavily along the way because we have a, a community discord which i hang out in and monitor and i respond to people's questions in there um, like if you get stuck in a lab or one of the lab is not working or something i will help you with it or i will fix the lab if it's actually broken so you're not alone just to keep that in mind and getting into how much the course actually costs uh, until may of 2023 uh, like for the first month we're going to be selling the course the cybersecurity course for the same price as the it course which is currently 500 dollars. it might be like 497 or something like this and then after May, uh, it's going to be about a thousand dollars, or you know, nine ninety seven, or you know, some number like this. So until May, you can get it uh, essentially for half off. And then touching on the CompTIA Security Plus Practice Question Deck, uh, this thing is absolutely free. There's a link in the description to download it. Um, all you have to do is click the link, enter the email address that you want to receive the deck on, and download it. Uh, an email will come, uh, download and install Anki. That's the app that will load the questions and then you download the deck. Once the deck is downloaded, you just simply double click it and then it will automatically import uh, into the Anki app and then all of the questions will be there. And if you're wondering like where this deck came from, me and my social media manager like spent a long time making this. Basically, we, we pay for chat GPT, we use chat GPT-4 and then we use um, a lot of individual prompts, if you know what those are, to build each individual question. And then I just went in quality control, like checked each question to make sure that they were uh, actually accurate. And then each question, it has um, explanations for the correct answer or the incorrect answer, as well as a reference to where you can read about what was asked in the question. And then currently there's over a thousand questions in there. Check out this dedicated video where I actually like go over the deck uh, fully, like I fully like talk about it in this video, but I just kind of wanted to talk about the deck here and then I guess give it away in this video as well, because it's kind of a component of the cybersecurity course. It's it's to kind of help people bring their, I guess, cybersecurity skill like up, up to speed. So the learning curve is not so tough once you get in the course, or of course, if you want to go, go ahead and take CompTIA Security Plus, I'd kind of recommend that um, if you actually want to get into cybersecurity and work in cybersecurity. So yeah, definitely check out that link in the description. Deck is absolutely free. You know, download it, give it to your friends, show them this video. Uh, super helpful, super useful. The cybersecurity course is actually it's designed to turn you into a SOC analyst essentially, but there's a lot of other components in the course that will let you work in many other domains in cybersecurity as well. So the actual labs and stuff is really SOC analyst centric. There's stuff in the, in the theory section and a lot of stuff that we do in the, in the labs we're working in Azure and doing a lot of general compute IT technology things. So you don't necessarily have to only apply to cybersecurity jobs, but that's the course is geared towards SOC analysts, but you can apply to a lot of other stuff as well. Like maybe like risk analyst, PCI analyst, vulnerability management technician or something like this. There's a lot of different things you can apply to. And there's a, actually a section in the course where I talk about all the different keywords you can use to job hunt. So you're not going to have any problem actually looking for jobs. So don't get in the mindset like, oh, I have to be a SOC analyst. Like, no, you, you can do a lot of different things in cybersecurity based on what you learn in this course. So yeah, definitely check it out. Again, it's going to be half off until May. Ask me in the comment section. Let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully see you in Discord.